Have you ever found yourself watching someone's vlog and thought, hey, that looks kind of fun. Maybe I should try that sometime. And then you might be wondering, is vlogging still a thing? Can it help me grow? And how do I get people to watch my vlogs anyway? I thought it would be fun for today's video to do almost like a mini state of the union about some of my current thoughts surrounding vlogging and my current vlog strategy and why it might be beneficial to you as a content creator. Now, if you've been watching me for a little while, you might know I started this YouTube channel in 2017 and I actually posted my first vlog that same year as well. We'll do a little rewind on my personal vlogging journey later in this video, but first, what is vlogging? Essentially, vlogging or video vlogging is a chance for content creators to document their life or a certain experience and share it with their audiences. Now, one thing you may have heard before is that there are kind of three different types of content and content creators. Creators who educate, creators who entertain, and creators who inspire. Now, I mentioned this because for a long time when I first started my YouTube channel, I was following one particular YouTube coach who told me that educational content was the key to success on YouTube. And in many ways, she's not wrong. I decided to change my YouTube channel partway through 2021 to focus primarily on these sit-down videos where I share tips and tricks for content creators and educate people. And choosing that niche and becoming an authority in this topic has helped my channel grow. But when it comes to content that I most enjoy, Enjoy watching on YouTube, it's almost entirely vlogs. So it did seem like some people could have success vlogging, but maybe not others. So in order to answer the question, should you be vlogging, I thought it would be helpful to walk through what I see as some of the benefits of vlogging and potential challenges that you can run into if you start creating vlog content. Let's start with some of the benefits of vlogging. Now, first of all, most vlogs, at least the ones that I watch on YouTube, are going to be long form content meaning they are going to be longer than just a couple of minutes, especially if you were doing a day or even a week in your life. Now, long form content, I personally think is still extremely powerful. And I think that all content creators should consider having at least one long form searchable platform that they are highly active on or at least posting once a week. So that could be a blog, that could be a YouTube channel, that could be a podcast, but really any form of long form content where you are able to express your thoughts and you don't have to feel like there is a limit. Not to mention here on YouTube, long form content is going to generate much, much higher ad revenue than short form content. So I create both long form and short form content here on my YouTube channel. I started long form in 2017 and shorts in 2020, 2021. Year to date in 2023 so far. <laughs> This is actually kind of mind blowing. 98% of the revenue that I've made from YouTube this year has come from my long form content. So shorts is just a drop in the bucket. This can vary from creator to creator for sure. If you primarily create short form content that constantly goes viral on shorts, I just hope that you're making a lot more money than I am from shorts ad revenue. And it's not just with YouTube. In general, your RPM or revenue per mile per 1000 views. I don't know why we still have to use the Latin for that acronym, but we do. Your revenue is going to be substantially higher on your long form content because there are more opportunities for or ad placements. Another big benefit of vlogging for content creators is kind of this idea of filming versus recording. I started to notice a lot of content creators share this tactic on TikTok. A lot of people saying, hey, just get on, start filming your life, start recording things and post content about that. You can always decide later to add overlay text to make a little compilation of something as simple as your daily commute or making your morning coffee. And this is so interesting because I think it really comes down to a piece of high effort content versus a piece of low effort content. And this is certainly not to say that vlogs are low effort content, but when you think about more easily integrating content creation into your day-to-day -day routine and documenting your life versus feeling like you have to come up with an incredible content idea, you have to do what I'm doing, sit down with big softbox box lights and my DSLR camera and have a script and be really prepared and create this high value piece of content. Doing that all the time can be exhausting. I typically try to batch my YouTube videos and shoot two on one day. So even though I create a long form YouTube video pretty much every week, I'm really only shooting twice a month. This allows me to take advantage of my energy when it's the highest, take advantage of my filming setup when everything is all together and supplement my channels and platforms with other short form pieces of content 
in the meantime. So that idea of recording versus filming, I think is very interesting and certainly a big benefit of vlogging where you're just taking people along in your day-to-day -day routine. Another huge benefit of long form content is building trust. Whether this is the first video you're watching of mine or the 50th video you're watching of mine, you've already spent several minutes of your day with me. I don't know about you, but I haven't even talked to my mom yet. Andrew left for work this morning, so I already have clocked more time with you than I have with some of the people who I'm closest with. And that's what I think is really the power of long form content. And especially when someone is vlogging and just sharing their life, they're not necessarily, you know, sitting here giving helpful tips like I might be. They really are just bringing you along. And that closeness and that proximity to someone is going to make you trust them more, especially if you are spending a lot of time with them. So that's just something very interesting that I think about all the time, especially if I'm talking to someone and I reference, oh, yeah, my friend was reading that book last week. And then I realized it's not my friend. It's someone who I watch every single vlog that they post on their YouTube channel. Another huge benefit of vlogging is that I think it's just such a more interesting storytelling format. And obviously with sit down videos, you know, Sean and I kind of work together to add cool motion graphics to make this more visually interesting for you since I am primarily sitting and talking to the camera. But when you're vlogging and you're bringing people along in your day-to-day -day life, you presumably are not just sitting in one spot all day. Even if you're working from home, you can go out for a walk. You can go over to the kitchen and get a cup of coffee. You can, at the end of the day, sit down and read a book. And when you're documenting that, and visually changing the scenery all the time, it can be much more interesting for the viewer because if you are just sitting and talking and there's not a lot going on visually, then it could also be more like just an audio listen. And the last big benefit of vlogging is you get to look back on moments in your life years and years later. As I was preparing to film this video, I got to go back and watch some of my old vlogs from like 2017, 2018. And I'm so grateful today to have those memories documented and to see what life was like then and think about how much has changed. With that though, let's get into some of the potential challenges of vlogging. And I think that these are really what hold people back. Number one, I do think it is a lot harder to hook people or get new viewers in when you're just creating blog content. I think the reason that the YouTube coach that I, you know, have taken a course of hers and everything is very intent on focus on the educational content on your YouTube channel is because when someone is looking for an answer to a question or a solution to a problem, YouTube is a great place to come for that. And you could get that answer from pretty much any number of people. If you're watching my videos, I assume you've also watched videos from other content creators who share their experience and tips. And maybe we both help you figure out, you know, the best way to edit an Instagram reel or what makes a successful YouTube channel. But with a vlog, you are coming to that person's blog specifically to hang out with them. And everyone's blogging style is going to look different and feel very different. So I do think that it's harder to get people to come in and start watching your vlogs unless you already have an audience you're transferring from another platform or you are just making them so engaging and so cool that people can't stop talking about them. Another potential challenge with vlogging is that you really do need to be committed and consistent with the vlog content that you create. For me, the vloggers who I watch, I watch pretty consistently every week, and that's because they are really delivering and putting out that new content for me to always have something to watch. If you just post one vlog and then you never post a vlog again, then the people who did tune in to watch that vlog might be looking for more similar content that uh, then they're not able to find. And if you're interested in starting a YouTube channel that is exclusively vlogs, then you definitely want to be consistent with it and keep up with it because people like knowing what were you up to this week or what were you up to yesterday and to be able to immediately get access to that long form content is something that I do think keeps people coming back for more for their favorite vloggers. I also think with vlogging, if you're not used to the idea of showing versus telling, that might be an adjustment you need to make in your content. For example, obviously here right now, I'm sitting and telling you all of my thoughts about vlogging, but if I were to show you all of my thoughts about vlogging, that would have to be a lot more visually interesting. 
For example, in any sit-down YouTube video, you can be telling someone what to do, and whenever possible, if there is a chance to add in a visual, that makes it a lot easier for people to actually see how you're doing something. And I think with vlogging, there's a really hard balance that should be achieved between, you know, sitting down at some point, catching up with people, oh, what did I think about that coffee shop that we just went to that I just tried, but not necessarily making a vlog just a one note thing where it turns into just sitting and talking through the whole thing. I think that the more you can show visually in a vlog, people want to see what you're seeing. It comes back to that idea of documenting what you're seeing. That can be really powerful. But if you're not used to creating content in that way, that's definitely a mindset shift that you need to consider. Now, you can certainly take what I just talked about in terms of some of the benefits and challenges of vlogging and think about maybe starting to incorporate occasional vlogs into to your content or posting blogs to your YouTube channel. If you want to be a vlogger, if you want to be known though just for your vlog content, I wanted to call out a few things that I've noticed for the really successful vlog channels that I personally follow. So the first thing that I've noticed about these creators is that they didn't start out as vloggers. In fact, a lot of them started out in very, very early YouTube, you know, the late 2000s, the early 2010s, creating all different types of content. Maybe it's a mall haul, maybe it's a beauty tutorial, maybe it's a travel video. Like, it could be truly anything. And these people, just because they were early adopters of the platform, have amassed these huge audiences now that have been with them through that whole time and who now are super, super interested and invested in them. So obviously right now, when I'm filming this in 2023, it's not as easy to be an early adopter of YouTube because it's been around for quite a while. But maybe you go viral and build an audience through shorts and then from there you have an audience who really cares about you, who likes you, who wants to get to know you better and you use that as a reason to start blogging and start long form content on your channel. Another thing I notice about these successful vloggers today who, like I said, they didn't really start out posting much blog content, but it seems like now they almost exclusively post blog content. And for these vloggers, I feel like it is very rare for them to post a sit down video or break from their vlog format at all. As I mentioned a little while ago, one of the challenges with vlogging could be being consistent with it. And one thing that I notice about the big vlog channels that I follow that are very successful is they are being super consistent. They're putting out one or sometimes even two really long form vlogs every single week. And when I say the vlogs are long, they're long. Like sometimes they are 30 minutes long. Sometimes they're over 45 minutes long. And I even personally have watched hour long vlogs before. Now, I don't know how it works for you when you listen to long form content or watch long form content, but you can let me know in the comments. But for me personally, I love watching things all the way through and I'll just break it up based on how much time I have. If I sit down for a lunch break and start a 45 minute vlog, the odds are that I will probably will watch like maybe 20 minutes of it while I'm eating my lunch. I'll pause it, it'll be on my watch later playlist and I'll come back to it whenever I next want to take a break or have some time. I don't know if I'm the only one who does that. No, please let me know in the comments what kind of watcher you are or even if you do this with podcasts too because I love the podcast that I listen to. I'm very loyal to them and I will always do my best to fully finish an episode unless for some reason I just am totally not entertained by it. So again, the truly successful vlogging channels that I've noticed right now didn't start out as vloggers, but they've amassed this huge audience that really cares about them. They are really consistent with their vlogs. They're putting out long content and they rarely break from that vlogging format. Also, please leave me a comment if you have any favorite vloggers because I'd be really interested to know who you guys are watching. So we've talked about what vlogging actually is. We've talked about challenges and benefits and what successful bloggers today are doing. As always, you know, I like to kind of be the guinea pig of some of these things for you and start testing out things before I come on and talk to you about them. So I thought it would be helpful to give some context and share a bit about my vlogging journey. The first vlog I ever posted was actually right after I got laid off from Nylon. So 
was suddenly like I was unemployed and I just had a lot of time on my hands and I had just gotten a new camera. Let's roll a little clip of my first ever vlog. I did just want to show you guys something that I just find like very funny. My blonde hair. Ooh, zoomed in. Our no music transitions, it just cut. Guys, it's Friday here in New York. It is September 8th and I am starting to vlog. I can't believe that was six years ago. Did you guys like my blonde hair? So in terms of my personal vlogging journey, I want to talk about what I did then, what I'm doing now, and where I think my channel is headed in terms of the type of content that I'm creating. So what did I vlog back then? Pretty much anything and everything. Again, this is really before I started learning more about SEO and the power of using that to get your videos in front of a very specific group of people. So so I feel like in the beginning of my YouTube channel, it was just very lifestyle-y, whatever I felt like doing. When I look back at my vlog playlist, and I will link that first vlog and my vlog playlist down below in case you'd like to go back into the archives and watch any of that content. But my two most popular vlogs that I did were number one, my trip to Thailand. That was a trip I took with Andrew. We'd only been dating for six months, but we went to Thailand together and I vlogged our trip. So that one had like 16,000 views. And then my second most popular video had just under 7,000 views and it was to come apartment hunting with me in New York City. So those were kind of the two standouts of vlogs and why do I think those got more views compared to some of the other stuff I was posting? I do think that it ties into SEO. People searching for Thailand vlog, what to do while you're there, travel itinerary and where we stayed, and also obviously apartment hunting in New York City. Like, I am not moving anytime soon, and that is one of my favorite things to watch and do, especially because I feel like so many people are interested in what apartments in New York City look like and also interested in what they cost and what you actually get for the money. Usually not a lot. And back then, it really was just all about being creative, trying to learn video editing, thinking about ways I can stay consistent on YouTube, because at the time I was uploading twice a week where it was a mix of vlog content and sit down videos. So where do I stand right now with blogging? Well, as you may have noticed, I have started integrating some blogs back into my YouTube channel. I think the biggest thing for me is that I genuinely did miss blogging. And I would say that, you know, in 2020 and 2021, it wasn't really like there was a whole lot for me to vlog anyway. So it was a great time for me to really dive into my sit down content start talking about things that I wanted to create, you know, digital products for and ultimately my digital course for as they're related to content creators and just go all in on that to see what happened. But blogs are the only type of YouTube video that I actually enjoy editing because it is a much more easy and chronological order of the clips and I just find it really visually fun to put together. So I really did miss the creative aspect of vlogging and me personally creating that long form piece of content and not to mention I love being able to look back on my blogs like from six or seven years ago and I want there to still be that kind of similar type of content that I can look back on six or seven years from now. The biggest difference between then and now is that I have been trying to make the blogs on my channel that I've put out in the past few months still super interesting and relevant to content creators. To me, the vlogs, and I think I've created four of them at the time I'm filming this video, have really been an opportunity to share more additional insights into my business, to take you along with me, to show you the behind the scenes that you don't always get from sit down educational content. And I think the cadence has been important too. You know, I've not switched over entirely to a vlogging format. I don't foresee that happening for my channel right now, but to just test out one vlog a month on the channel to see how you're all liking it, if it gets views, if people are watching it, and to give me a chance to fulfill that creative thing that I want to do and still be helping creators and influencers in the process. And that brings brings me to where I see my channel going in terms of my content overall. And I think there are actually ways that vlogging can help with sit down videos and that sit down videos can help with vlogging because sometimes I watch vlogs and even if they're fun, I, you know, usually use them as an entertainment or inspiration piece of content, right? I talked about those big three earlier. 
Whereas I'm not always taking away something helpful from the vlog, more so it's like a recommendation or a product or things like that. So I would love to, when I do vlog, always still find ways to incorporate helpful tips or share the behind the scenes, but also think about potential ways that I could make my sit down educational videos more visually interesting. And that could even mean just filming in a different spot than the bookshelf, although I know you guys do love the rainbow bookshelf, or even filming in a few different locations locations around my apartment if it's ever clean enough for me to coordinate something like that. Just to change things up a little bit and give a little bit more visual interest to videos, especially because for long form content, you do want to keep retention and you do want to keep things interesting all throughout the video. So that's just something I think about when I think about the future of my channel and the future of my content, because I think the vlog format is great on its own. I think the sit down video format is great too. I personally have learned so much just from watching free YouTube videos like the one you're watching right now. At the end of the day, my goal is to share my process, share my life and share insights that I have as a full-time micro influencer to help any of you who are interested in being full-time content creators or who are interested in monetizing your side hustles. And if you get to know me a little bit better in the process and get to watch something a little more interesting along the way, then I think that is a great potential place to take the channel in. Please don't forget to leave me your thoughts in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you and hear what you think on the topic of blogging. And if you primarily watch my sit down videos and you've not yet checked out my blogs, please check out the up next recommendation on the screen. I will link my latest blog there for you and I would love to hear your feedback on it. Be sure to subscribe for new videos from me every week and I will see you all in the next video.